All right. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, hope you're. I hope you're making it to the week awake. Um, today we're going to learn about implicit differentiation, which is a very interesting topic, but it's way harder than it is interesting. It is pretty hard. Um, because then it's pretty abstract. That doesn't mean we can't do it. it just means it's not going to be easy. Um, but we're fearless, so it doesn't matter. <clears throat> not only fearless, we want a challenge. We eat difficult for breakfast. Hope you've eaten breakfast. Breakfast is the most important meal. They say I wouldn't know. Uh, okay. Before doing that, I have I have two more examples I want to do of the chain rule, um, which are very important. Um, sort of things I can do. Things I, I didn't want to do before, but I can do. I can do a lot easier now. So. Um, so the, the exponential function that doesn't have base C is, uh, we don't know its derivative yet. So if I want this function to make any sense, I, I need to make B positive. It could be zero, but I know the derivative of that function. Um, so how can I make, um, Uh, I'm gonna take this derivative using the chain rule. So right now, this is not a composition of two functions, at least not in, uh, it's not in any obvious way. But what I could do is write it as an exponential with base e of something of what? I didn't expect the question three minutes in. What goes in here to make these equal? If b of x equals, it's not x, uh, unless b, because b could be, you know, two. Um, and two to the x is not e to the x. So it's not x. bx, um, that's not it either. Getting closer though. Um, the x, so this is pretty close because the, the rules of exponents said, say that this is e to the b to the x. So this is, I mean, both options you gave me are something to the x, uh, they're just not b to the x. How do you solve this equation? If you have p to the x equals to e to the u and you want to solve for u, how do you solve for u? Take a logarithm, right? So what happens if I take a logarithm? I get logarithm of b to the x equals to the logarithm of e to the u. Um, but now, logarithm and the exponential are inverse functions. Which means that when I do one and then the other, uh, I get the thing I started with. So I just solve for u. u is a logarithm 
of uh, e to the u uh, of e to the x. So p to the x <clears throat> is e to the logarithm of b to the x. Uh, now, if I look at that, I, that's not that's not good to take the derivative. If there's a logarithm that I don't know what to do yet with, um, I don't know what to do with yet. And there's still a b to the x in there that I, whose derivative I'm trying to find out. But the thing is, the logarithm of b to the x, I can rewrite in a different way. Um, using the properties of logarithms. Um, now, if it was after eight, I expect you to know the properties of logarithms, but before eight, I am not that optimistic. So I'm gonna tell you the logarithm of a power um, is the same as what you got putting the power multiplying outside. Taking a power and then a logarithm is the same thing as taking a logarithm and then multiplying. So, um, properties of logarithms are so important, so vital to your life. You don't know them before 8 a.m., but that's, that just makes you defenseless. You're at risk while you don't know them. So um, so now, if I look at that function, I know how to take that derivative. And it's not even that, um, not even that complicated because x log of b, well, it has a log, which I don't know how to take the derivative of. But I know how to take, but the thing is, it's log of a number, it's log of, it's log of a constant is a constant. So it doesn't matter, you could say whatever you want there. Um, because it might as well be this, it doesn't matter that there's a log. So the derivative of uh, this function is, well, so, Okay, so the outside function is the exponential and the inside function is x log b. So if I take the derivative of the outside, that, so the derivative of the exponential is itself, that's, I know that that's very easy to remember. And I, so I take that applied to the inside. And then I'm supposed to multiply by the derivative of the inside. And do not be faced by the logarithm of either. This is just a constant times x. So the derivative of a constant times x uh, by the power rule is, is just a constant because x to the one prime is one x to the zero. So just multiply by th that constant. So in conclusion, what we got is that, um, well, this is the derivative. It's just this very simple thing. E to the x log b by the stuff I just did is, is b to the x. So the derivative of b to the x is the same function times log b. Exponentials are the only uh, functions whose derivative is uh, themselves times a constant. <clears throat> so, This is, um, this might be useful to memorize, uh, but on the other hand, it's not that hard to derive from knowing the derivative of e to the x and knowing that you can write an exponential as something with base e and then log, which is just more important to know than 
his formula. Okay, so we know the derivative of, of all the exponentials now. Are there any questions? So, you know, from now on, if you know this, you know this. Um, it's fine, you can just know it from memory. But this was just a reasonable exercise to do in using the chain rule. Okay. The other example I want to do is the derivative of cosine because um, I I did the derivative of sine very carefully, and then I sort of just told you um, the derivative of, of cosine. Uh, and I don't like having to believe things, taking some faith. Um, But what I'm going to do is write cosine as a sine. And there's it's actually a lot of ways to do that. Um, but I think the most reasonable one is to draw a triangle. And a triangle with hypotenuse 1 and stare at it for a little bit. And remember that the opposite over the adjacent is the sine and the the opposite over the adjacent is the tangent. The opposite over the hypotenuse is the sine. So the opposite over hypotenuse and the adjacent over the hypotenuse is the cosine. This is a right angle. So, um, so what's the missing angle? If x was 30 degrees, what would the other angle be? Sixty, and Sydney knows that uh, because Sydney knows that the angles in a in a triangle add up to one eighty, which is just a beautiful fact. Um, and you probably learned this in trick, um, or maybe even earlier. Uh, the angles in a triangle add up to one eighty, so y is 90 degrees minus x. So, or, or pi over 2, because calculus works better with radians. So, oh no, that's not what I meant to do. Um, so if I look at this, so if I look at this um, at this triangle, I now realize that this is the sign of, so now this is the adjacent, uh, sorry, the adjacent uh, side to the angle x is the opposite uh, side to the angle pi over two minus x. And the opposite thing to x is the adjacent thing to pi over two minus x. So, um, so that's what I wanna. That's what I wanna say. I wanna say that the cosine of x is the sine of pi over two minus x. So if I don't know the derivative of cosine, I can take the derivative of the right hand side because I know the derivative of sine and I know the derivative of the the stuff on the inside. So the derivative of cosine. So if I remember that trig identity, or at least if I remember 
there was something relating sine and cosine. I, I looked it up. This would be really fast. Um, so what I got to do is the derivative of the outside. So this is pi over 2 minus x, which I then plug into the sine times the uh, so derivative of the outside applied to the inside untouched uh, times the derivative of the inside. And the derivative of sine is cosine. And the thing that I have left is a polynomial. This is 0 because it's a, it's a constant. The derivative of a constant is 0. Derivative of negative x is negative 1. Uh, again, because of the power rule. So this is negative cosine of pi halves minus x. But now, um, if I look at the triangle again, <clears throat> cosine of pi halves minus x is cosine is sine of x. So the derivative of cosine is negative sine. And now you don't have to take my word for it. You just got to delete the triangle. <clears throat> I love it when things are easy. Any questions? Do I time a minute? Can we just the, the derivative of cosine? Can you just memorize it? You sh should. You shouldn't draw this triangle every time. Uh, but it's nice to know once in, a, in your life why it's like that. But. Are we going to have to prove that cosine x prime equals, are we going to have to do this on the homework or the final? Uh, no, because that would be, that would be stupidly easy. Um, I mean, in the homework, you can use your notes in the homework. And I'm not going to give you a homework problem. That is, I look at this line and copy it. Um, and the final is open book as well. You can look at the book. Uh, I guess you can look at the notes as well. Um, and I'm also not going to give you a problem that is copy the notes. So no. If the final was, is the final online, uh, the final is take home. So yeah, it's online. If the final was in person, I mean, I wouldn't ask you a trick problem, but I would ask you, um, I I would ask you the chain rule parts for sure. The chain, you, you know, I would give you the the trig identity. Uh, I, <clears throat> okay. Hope you had time to digest this. Um, I'm gonna move on, but. If the next thing I say you have time digesting, maybe what you should do is stop me halfway through and not wait to be confused at the end. Uh, no, Dustin, I'm not going to ask you to prove that because you could just copy what I did. That would be, that would be boring. I might ask you to prove that the derivative of a more interesting function. Uh, I mean, I'm going to. No, I, I have the homework 90% written. Uh, it's, it's mostly computing a lot of derivatives with, with proof because you can just, uh, I don't want you to give me the answer of a calculator. I want you to show me that you know how to do it. But I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna ask you 
I have to use trig because I couldn't I couldn't do this thing without drawing a triangle and remembering what trig is. But I don't I'm not gonna test you on your trig knowledge. Okay. Um I think I've gone five sections for getting to write the chapter uh, number, but here we are. Implicit differentiation. So, um, the, so what is implicit differentiation about? What this is about is about the fact that solving equations is very hard if i'm being generous uh, if i'm being realistic almost every equation is impossible to solve but the thing is without solving equations um or without solving hard equations um we can still find derivatives. Um, so that's um, that's what this is about. Um, so let me show you in an example. So take this equation. This is not an example of an equation that is hard to solve, um, but uh, I have some of those too, don't worry. The next example is hard to solve. Um, so um, does anyone remember what this equation, if, if I draw the set of points x, y in the plane that have this equation, that satisfy this equation, what shape it makes? Oof, another trick question. Circle, is it a circle? There you go, it's a circle of radius five. So this is a circle. So, um, so now, um, uh, this is not the graph of a function, uh, clearly, because clearly a circle uh, doesn't pass the vertical line test. But the thing is, that's not very important. I mean, a circle still has tangent lines, uh, even though it's not a function. Um, um, the thing is, the thing is, even if it's not the graph of a function, um, it's it's two it's just two graphs put together. Like the, the the upper half is a function, the lower half is a function. So, um, so that's it. So I can ask about the derivatives of this function. So the circle is a union of two halves. And this is a function. And this is another function. So um, I want to find its derivative. Uh, but so, <clears throat> okay, um, so how do I get these functions? If I have, so, uh, let's say I want 
the Tianyan line. At the point three four, for example. Uh, so if x is three and y is four, three squared plus four squared is nine plus sixteen, which is twenty five. Just remember to know if something is on the on the curve, you plug it into the equation. If I don't choose a point in the circle, how am I going to? Uh, how do I even expect to? What, what does it even mean to have the tangent line here? Doesn't really mean anything. Well, it's not that I can think of. So, so how do I find this tangent line? Well, one thing I could do. Um, which is not implicit differentiation, is solve the equation. So I can go write y equals f of x by, so that, that means getting y by itself, solving x squared plus y squared equals 25. for solving for y. So, um, so I, I mean, this is not the worst equation in the world to, to solve. So I could, I would get y equals 25 minus x squared. And now um, to keep solving for y, I need to take the square root. Uh, and now is when I run into the problem that there's two square roots. So this is not a function and this is not a function because he has two values at x equals three, y could be four or negative four. Um, but what I, the thing is, I know I want the point three, four. So um, I'm gonna choose the positive one. So this is one very annoying thing that happens when you solve this equation. I have to make choices. I want to make y equals four, which is positive. Um, so, so now that equation that I have, that equation where y was implicit, which is why this business is called implicit, why is implicit because you could find y in terms of x from x squared plus y squared equals 25. But um, uh, but you have to find it by solving something every time. So now that it's solved, now it's explicit. Now uh, you don't need to solve anything. If I give you x equals 3, you just plug it in there, see what you get. So now it's the question of finding the tangent line to a function. And that's the problem that we know how to do. It means take the derivative and, and that's the slope. And you know the point is three, four. So that's all you need. Um, the top half is, um, uh, the, the, the function that I just found by solving. So the slope of the tangent is uh, the derivative of y. So this is a, this is yet one more opportunity to practice the chain rule. So there's a, uh, there's a function on the outside that maybe it's clear what to do with if I write the square root as the one half power. Uh, so I got to use the um, I got to use the power rule and the chain rule. So the derivative of the outside I get by applying the the power rule to the inside.
<clears throat> and then I got to multiply by the derivative of the inside, which is um, the derivative of uh, 25 minus x squared, so negative 2x. Again, by the power rule. So that's the derivative. And normally, if, if, I, if that's all I wanted, I wouldn't simplify this. I would be like, I don't care. But now I'm going to because I have to do things with it. Um, so um, will, Autumn? All the keys cancel. Also, is cancel. it negative x over root 25 minus x squared? That's what, yeah, that's where I'm going. Yep, thank you. So uh, a power of one half is supposed to be, well, it's one divided by a power of one half. That's one over the square root. So so that's the simplest way I can think of writing this. So there's the derivative. Um, and now I want I want to make x equals three. So the derivative at three is negative three divided by root of twenty five minus three squared, and that's going to be negative three fourths. So um, so there you go. That's um, That's the slope of the tangent, uh, which means that the, the tangent line well, it's the, the the formula that's most useful for this is the one where you have the points and the slope. So uh, y minus four equals negative three fourths times x minus three. Uh, I mean, I know enough about circles to know that this is correct. Um, but uh, we can go graph it. So here's x root plus y squared equals 25. And what I claim was the tangent line was this purple line and indeed it looks tangent at the point three four and i know it is tangent uh, because the it's perpendicular to the radius of the circle but this is just something i know about circles okay so that was the that was the way of solving this problem that i don't like because it involves solving an equation and then getting a very nasty answer and one thing I don't like to do with nasty answers is take derivatives of them. Because, well, then it takes long, I make mistakes, I cry. Other questions? Okay. Um, so. I have a question. Yeah. Would you just be able to find the, um, the slope of the tangent line by using the original equation? Uh, like the whole and not just like the top half? Well, one way to do that is what I'm about to do, which is using implicit differentiation. So probably yes, yeah. Uh, what I want to do is do this without solving. So So implicit differentiation means you you take this equation and you go like this and you take the derivative uh, no matter no matter what no matter what is happening. 
no matter what you see. So how am I going to take the derivative of this formula? Well, so um, the things people tend to not say is that uh, I'm thinking that y is a function of x. Because I'm thinking, I'm thinking I could solve it. I don't want to, but I could. Um, it's a function, or maybe y could represent one of, in this case, two functions. And if y is a function of x, that means that, in theory, even though I'm not going to do it, if you gave me an x, I could give you a y. So that would make it a function. And if you gave me an x, I could, I could. Um, give you a y, square it, and add x squared. Uh, so everything everything on side is a function of x. So if that is the case, um, I can take its derivative. So now what's happening is that this is a function of x, uh, but this particular function of x always spits out 25 because y is going to be whatever gives me 25 for x plus y squared, or one of the whatevers. Um, so if I have two functions which are equal, like in this case, x squared plus y squared is equal to the function 25, which means that means that for every x, uh, I get 25. I can take derivatives on both sides. and the derivative of two functions which are equal are going to be equal. So from here, I'm going to get an equation. Um, and I'm going to, and it's going to be an easy equation. OK, so let's start with the easy thing. This is 0. The derivative of a constant is 0. Now. Derivative of x squared is not that hard either. Uh, and now the problem is what do I write here? What is the derivative of y squared? Uh, so what did I say? I said y is a function of x. So if, if you give me x, I, I give you y. And then this particular function is going to be the function where you give me x, I find y, and then I take y and I plug it into the square. This is a this is a composition of two functions. This is a composition. This is mm, well. I guess this y is doing what uh, u was doing yesterday. This is f of g of x. If f of x is the square and g of x is y. If I, play, if I plug y into y in for x over there, I, I get y squared. So this means that, well, the outside here is 2y. I need to take the derivative of y squared with respect to y. Lemmings notation looks really good here. I need to take dy squared respect to y and then multiply it by the derivative of the inside. And those two derivatives are, are easy. This one is the power rule. Well, easy. dy dx is the thing I'm trying to find. So I don't know dy dx. So I'm just going to leave it there. So what goes in here is, and you don't need to do all those things. You can do it in your head. Um, you have a function of y. It's a derivative of the outside times the derivative of the inside. But keep in mind, I don't know the derivative of the inside yet. That's what I'm trying to find. So now I look at this equation, and I want to I wanna solve for y prime. Uh, in principle, I know everything else, for example. I was trying to make x equals 3 and y equals 4 and see what y prime is in this case. So 
So um, there's there's only two steps to implicit differentiation. Take the derivative of an equation and solve for the derivative you want, which is always going to appear in there. And this equation is, is really easy uh, because uh, the thing is I start with all any sort of nasty algebraic equation or not even not algebraic equation. But in the end, because of the chain rule, the y prime is just going to be multiplied with some things. So this equation is just a linear equation in the end, which means I take everything that has a y prime, put it on one side. I take everything that doesn't, put it on the other side, and then divide everything out except for the y prime. And then I cancel these two because they're not doing anything. So in the end, I get that y prime is negative x over y. So I didn't get, so if you look at what I got before, I got that the derivative, I got that the derivative was negative x divided by um, the square root. But this square root is y. This is, these two expressions are the same thing. So here, uh, you know, this has a disadvantage that it's not just in terms of x, it's in terms of y. On the other hand, so it would be a bit, it would take a bit longer to compute it in an example. But on the other hand, uh, in terms of how much algebra I had to do, this was way, way easier. All I had to t do was take the derivative of, x, of y squared, use a chain rule and solve a linear equation. Before I had to take square roots, I had to choose a square root, which is the worst of every of all the things. I had to uh, I had to do a chain rule that was a lot harder. This was really a lot easier. And if we do more examples, uh, the, the difference becomes all the more drastic. So other questions? No, there's no questions. Instead of writing y prime, can I write dy? Uh, you can. If I were you, I would write dy dx um, because I have not said so. Matthew asks, um, let me write down Matthew's question. So, if I take derivatives, what I did just now was write things like this. Matthew is asking if he can write dy instead of um, instead of y prime, and the answer is you can if you know what you mean. But I have never, and I won't say what dy means. Um, I. I will defend that it doesn't mean anything. I would write dy dx. So if you want to go like this, if you want to write things like this, um, so you get dx squared dx plus, um, if you write dy dx, I think then then we know what it means. It means the derivative. Um, and then treat this thing that is not really a fraction as it's, it's just one one entity that you can't separate. Uh, but I mean, if you, from here, so one thing people do, is they write, um, from here, they say I take I take d. I don't take the derivative. Um, and now, ugh, I could I could divide by uh, divide everything by dx or divide everything by dy. Um,
this is something you you are very likely to see, especially if you move on to differential equations, which is something you see in talk two. Um, it's just a convenient shorthand, but I find it a bit confusing. So I'm not gonna I'm not gonna do that. Um, If you take a lot more math, you might see some explanations um, for what the X and DY mean, but I'm not, I'm gonna stand by saying that they don't mean anything. So it works, uh, you know, because, because, but it works because you're doing the same thing I'm doing. So you can, you can do it, uh, just be careful to not get confused. Okay, uh, so, where I was is saying I got to the, in however way, they're all essentially the same. I concluded that Y prime is negative X over Y. So I, I wanted to make X equals three, Y equals four. Well, in this case, um, I don't need to think at all. Uh, y equals negative three fourths. Uh, Another side effect of doing this is that somehow the formula look, look nicer with y's instead of uh, the original formula that I got that was negative x divided by square root 25 minus x squared. Also, another advantage that is not apparent at so first of, of this thing that I wrote is that there's two functions here. There's the positive square root and the negative square root, but this formula works for both. This formula works for both functions. Uh, the, upper, the upper circle and the, the lower circle. This one only, since we started with um, with the positive square root, it only works for the positive square roots. If you, if you start with a negative square root, you would get an opposite there. So um, this is another great advantage. If I now ask you what the derivative at three negative four is, you would be able to do it in an instant. So we got the, um, so we got the same slope we got before. So the, the line, just like before, this is exactly the same. Is uh, is given by the point slope formula up here, and that's it. And conceptually, this was harder because it involved looking at a strange formula and taking the derivative, thinking of it as a function of x, which is conceptually hard. Um, and it has the added problem that when people do this a lot, they stop they stop writing down why it's a function of x. They just sort of do it. Like a lot of people just, you, you write this formula for them and, the, and, the, and they go like this um, without, ever, without ever, without saying in, in the way that why is a function of x. And that at least it confuses me. Um, at first, I was very confused. Um, when people write things like this, why, what is a function of what? So I personally think it's important to be careful with that. Uh, but the thing is, this works um, and it takes some practice. But once we learn this, we can take every derivative. All right. Uh, that's state 20. Are there any questions? Um, if, there's, if there's questions, I'll answer them. If there's no questions, I won't answer them. And if